A Brooklyn bishop was robbed at gunpoint in the middle of his Sunday sermon today, and it was all caught on camera. The service was being live streamed this morning when he says three to four men walked in with guns. He spoke at length with CBS 2's Lisa Rosner about why he believes he was targeted and his message for the suspects. Five to ten minutes into preaching Sunday morning on Remsen Avenue in Canarsie, Bishop Lamore Whitehead saw the door in the back of the room kick open. How many of you have lost your faith because you saw somebody else die? What you about to go through? Yo, yo, all right, all right, all right, all right. I seen three to four men come in. I said, all right, all right, all right. It's pretty much stating that I don't want. I'm not going to do anything, right? Because I know y'all coming from me. Y'all coming straight to me. I don't want my parishioners hurt, right? I got um, women and children there. As I got down, one went to my wife and took all her jewelry and, um, and had the gun in front of my eight-month-old baby's face. Um, took off my bishop's ring, my, um, my wedding band, and took off my bishop's chain. And then I had chains underneath my robe um, and um, he started tapping my neck to see if anything else. So that means they knew. They, they watched and they knew that I have other jury. The church's live stream shows the gun being held on the pastor. They had the guns on, the, on my deacons that was at the door. Whitehead says what you don't see on camera are around 100 congregants who were in the room. Men, women, and children dropped to the floor in silence. My church is traumatized. The women and children are still crying still crying. Babies are still crying. Police say the men took off in a white Mercedes. Whitehead says cops have a license plate and witnesses saw the men change clothes outside. These men, they need to turn themselves in. I forgive you and I'm praying for you, you know, and I hope that God deliver you from the mindset of who you are at this time. Whitehead believes his family was targeted because of the publicity he received when he helped turn in the suspect wanted in the fatal subway shooting of 48-year-old Daniel Enriquez in May. I turned them in, but the media called me the bling bling bishop. They had my Rolls Royce car all over everywhere, and I feel that that played the part in this. I think all pastors should be uh, be able to get permits for pistols. The NYPD is investigating, and Whitehead says the mayor and top police brass have called him, pledging support to find the suspects. Fortunately, no one was hurt. In Canarsie, Brooklyn, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. In a statement, a spokesperson for Mayor Adams said, quote, no one in this city should be the victim of an armed robbery, let alone our faith leaders and congregants worshiping in a house of God. The NYPD is investigating this crime and will work tirelessly to bring the criminals involved to justice. Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. It's your Ak Kadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Barakatha. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty. He's also known as the King of Terrors. And Yahweh Shah being the name of his only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And as you can see in the opening clip, all right, the bling bling pastor got, got robbed, man. You know, he was a, a flashy pastor from Brooklyn, New York. You know, robbing his congregation. And finally, he was hit, man. He was robbed. You know, the Most High is tired of these wicked pastors, man. Making money off the oppressed. Right? Making money off the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? To finance their um, Rolls Royce. Or to finance their, man their mansions. Their, their jewelry, their clothes, the Most High sick of it, man, right? And that was doing of the Most High. That was his doings. That's what, that was judgment from the Most High. Whether you like it, love it, understand it or not, you know, that was judgment from the Heavenly Father ultimately, right? Because these pastors don't give a damn about their congregation and their salvation, man. Because the pastor don't give a damn about his own salvation, so how can he care about your salvation? Right? And it did look like a setup, man. Like one of his damn deacons or ushers, you know, dropped the dime on him, dropped the scoop on him. Right? And, and let his people know when to hit him. 
you know, but that's neither here or there because it all was the doings of the most high. All right. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of these pastors out here that keep playing with the most high, thinking that they can uh, buy the Holy Spirit, man. Thinking that gain is godliness. All right. Let me start off with the book of uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1, and it reads, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Right? So that word woe means destruction. So he said, destruction be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. They destroy the most high's uh, sheep, Right? By giving them doctrines of devils, by telling them they got to pay their tithes to receive a blessing, right? Because that's not in the scriptures, man. That that doctrine alone destroys the minds of our people, man, that you got to sow your seed in order to receive a blessing, right? They destroy our people by telling them to pray to a white Jesus, man, to call upon the name Jesus because that's not his name, right? They destroy and scatter the sheep because you go into a church building and you get the doctrine of Christianity. It make you not even want to serve the most high, right? Because the God that they preaching about don't even exist in the word. They giving you a fabricated fairy tale a uh, mythical God that don't even exist, man. That's how they destroy and scatter the sheep of his pasture. Right? Verse 2. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel, right? Because he's only the Lord God of Israel. Israel consists of you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native, and Seminole Indians, right? It said, verse 2 again, Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Right. And he's speaking about the pastors pertaining to you Israelite pastors, man. You so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indian pastors, you know, the kings of Judah. Right. That's supposed to be feeding the flock. They're supposed to be leading our people to salvation. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. They teaching you doctrine contrary to the law. They teaching you doctrine contrary to the faith, man. Right? It say, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon the evil of your doings, said the Lord. And that's exactly what happened to this to this pastor, man. This pastor pork chop. Right? This pastor Sir Flash a lot. You know what I'm saying? This pastor um, teaching uh, for Instagram or teaching for views. You know what I'm saying? He not he not trying to show people the way to the kingdom. He's showing our people the way to destruction, man. And that's why the most high visit upon the evil of his doing. He met evil with evil, man. Right. From the article he he the uh, pastor spoke about, he said, I got women and children there. As I got down, one went to my wife and took all her jewelry. So them them um them robbers, right? They went in the church and laid them down, went to the man's wife and made her come up off all her ice, man. Right? That she got from off the backs of the labor of the congregation. Right. It say one went to my wife and took all her jewelry and had the gun in front of my eight month old baby's face. He continued. So this guy, this pastor, he got robbed in front of his whole congregation on live stream. And these robbers put the gun on his wife and his eight month old baby, man. And the most I had mercy because the most I could have ended him and his wife and child, man, right there in front of everybody. So he has some compassion and mercy on that man. 
right? The article reads, it says, um, took off my bishop's ring, my wedding band, and took off my bishop chain. And then I had chains underneath my robe, and he started tapping my neck to see if there was anything else. Like on the movie Friday, man, when Debo rolled up on Red, and he snatched his chain, and Red said, uh, my grandma gave me that chain. Debo say, what chain? That's what, them, that's what them niggas said when they robbed the pastor, man. What chain? Right? They snatched the chain off his neck. Right? It says, so that means they knew. They watched and they knew that I have other jewelry, he said. Right? So they were scoping you out, man. Your deacon in the church was probably scoping you out. Telling them the perfect time to hit them, man. Right? People are tired. People are fed up with the lies of the Christian church. People are fed up with these false doctrines, these doctrines of devils. They, they not receiving nothing. They still oppressed. Nothing is changing for them. They, they, they having the same wicked and nasty and vile thoughts in their head. They, they, you're not teaching them how to cast down their imaginations, man. You're not teaching them to keep the commandments of the most high. All you doing is giving a motivational speech and asking for damn money, man. Asking for offerings and tithes. Faithfully. And the people going into the church and when they come out, they dumber than when they first went in, man. More oppressed than when they first went in. Right? Reading, reading on in the um, article, it say Whitehead said there were gunmen with firearms raised to deacons at the door as well. There were about 20 to 25 con congregants, congregants present, police said. Right? He says, my church is traumatized, Whitehead said. Right? So his, tr his church is traumatized by what happened, man. Because that could have turned into a uh, mass shooting in the church if they wouldn't have cooperated. Right? That could have easily turned into a mass shooter if they didn't comply. You know them folks in there traumatized, man. Why? Because the Lord is terrible, man. The Lord is terrible. The king of terrors. Therefore, through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Right? Let me get uh, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 43, and verse 29. Ecclesiasticus chapter 43 and verse 29 and it reads the Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous in his power you know and that's something that the church don't teach you man the Lord is terrible man we we serve a terrible power a terrible and great power man he's known as the king of death right because every killing ultimately belongs to the Lord whether he let Satan do it or not, every killing is ultimately of the Lord, man. Because he said, I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hands. And it's a it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Right? Because the living power controls your destiny. He controls your destination, man. You know what I'm saying? We deal with a with a with a power that is terrible and great, very great and marvelous is his power. Right. Let me jump to the book of Psalms. Chapter 66 and verse three. Right. Psalms chapter 66 and verse three. And it reads, say unto the most high. How terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. Right. And just like that pastor saw the pistols and he automatically cooperated. He submitted himself to the most high. Why? Because he's an enemy of the most high and don't even know it, man. These pastors are literally enemies of God. Because they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Right? We know that we we know that we know the most high. 
We know that we love the most high because we keep his commandments and the faith in Christ. We do what he say do. No matter how crazy we look to the rest of the world, to our family, to our friends, to our loved ones in the household, we don't care how crazy we look. We're going to follow this book to the T, man. And these pastors not doing that. So therefore, they are an enemy of the most high. Because if you're not with them, you're against them, man. If you're not walking with them, you're walking contrary to them. Right? How terrible art thou in thy works, man. The most high is terrible in his works. Turn on the news, man. And if you don't watch the news, just go outside and look around. Look in your neighborhoods and look what's going on, man. This is all works of the most high. Right. It say through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. Right. Verse four, all the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Salah. Verse five, come and see the works of the most high. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He is terrible. And his doings toward the children of men. Right. And that's pertaining to the heathens. At the same time, though, our people follow the ways of these heathens, man. Two thirds of our people are heathens. Right. Because they live in lawless. They live in wickedly. They live in the dark because they love darkness rather than light. Right. They blinded by the fashion of this world. They in love with the world. You know what I'm saying? So the most high is terrible in his doings toward them, man. Give them heavy judgment, heavy judgment. That happened on that man in his congregation right in Brooklyn got robbed on Sunday morning. Right. Sunday morning. Easy like Sunday morning. It was easy, man. Them, them robbers probably rolled off to that song. Easy like Sunday morning. That was a sweet lick. That was a sweet lick, man. A lot, a lot of y'all young cat, you know, Salaki. A lot of y'all young cats out there, right? A lot of y'all, y'all young, y'all millennials who want to tote pistols and run around robbing. You know, you had a rapper that robbed ATMs and rapped about it. You have people doing all kind of stuff, selling dope. Taking pictures, putting putting all their money on Facebook and all that. But y'all ain't doing nothing, man. Them, them boys went, ran in that church and got damn near a million dollars worth of jewelry, man. In a church, y'all been hitting the wrong spots. Y'all been hitting the wrong spots. Even back in my heyday, you know, I was doing it wrong. Th these cats just showed me where the money at. You ain't got to run in no bank. You ain't got to run in nobody's house. You ain't got to jack cars. Run up in the church. You're going to come out with a good half a, half a ticket or a whole ticket. You know what I'm saying? Not condoning, you know, robbery and theft and all that. I'm just saying, you know, those that's living that lifestyle, y'all doing it wrong, man. Because these, these, these men who was masked up, these so-called goons, right, who was masked up, armed, they ran up in the church and got damn near a million dollars, man, worth a jury. Right. So they'll probably get a half a million on the black market on the streets. You know, they'll probably get it out, get up, get off of it on the streets for about a half a million. It's still a ticket, though. You know what I'm saying? But the most high, you know, bring forth his judgments every morning, man. Let me get that in Zephaniah. Right. Zephaniah chapter three and verse five. Zephaniah chapter three and verse five. And it reads. The just Lord, Yahweh, is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. So the heavenly father is just and he don't do no iniquity. Even though he create the evil and he create the good, there is no salakia. So like there is no darkness in him. Right. He will not do iniquity. It says every morning doeth he bring his judgment to light. Sunday morning, he brought his judgment to light right in the midst of the church, man, in the midst of the congregation. On live stream for the world to see, right? Because every morning doeth he bring forth. So like if every morning doeth he bring his judgment to light, he fell if not, 
but the unjust knoweth no shame. All right. So the most I bring his judgment for every morning, man. Every morning do he bring forth his judgment to light. Soon as you wake up, you could hear of a tragic story or a tragic situation that done happen. You know what I'm saying? Because the most high is great and terrible in his works, man. And marvelous with his power. Right? He faileth not, but the unjust but the unjust knoweth no shame. The unjust gonna keep being unjust. Creflo Dollar came out and said that the prosperity gospel is wrong. A thousand more pastors going to go hard for the prosperity gospel. Right? Because they don't know no shame. They don't have no shame in robbing people, you know, um, teaching their congregation that gain is godliness, that the most high dealing with their church because they got money. You know what I'm saying? They don't know no shame. The most high hate Hate robbery, man. Hate robbery of his people. You know what I'm saying? That's what these pastors are doing, man. They robbing the people. They robbing the children of Israel. They keeping them in gross darkness. They can't tell them the truth because they under a 501c3, man. They're not teaching you to keep the law, statutes, and commandments like we were commanded to do, man. Right? And another thing, too. Those pastors in those churches that got it, the T.D. Jakes, the Joel Osteens, the mega pastors, they storing their riches right here on earth, man. And our Lord told us not to do that. I'm going to get this last precept in the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 19. Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 19, and it reads, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Prime example, Pastor Bling Bling, right? The Bling Bling pastor, he laid his treasures upon the earth, and them thieves broke through and stole from him, man. Why? Because he's not rich toward the Most High. He's not rich toward the Most High. He's rich in the world. But toward the heavenly father, he not rich. And he done took an L and now he's full of fear right now. He's filled with fear right now. His child, his wife, his kids, you know what I'm saying? They they scared. The congregation is scared. It was more families in there that witnessed that, man. And, and nine times out of ten, only probably a handful of people going to wake up to realize that that was judgment of the most high. Instead of looking at them robbers like they the evil ones and they the bad ones, right? Which possibly they could be. You know what I'm saying? They could be evil or bad. But ultimately, it was the judgment of the Heavenly Father, man. Because that pastor not doing what he's supposed to do by the Lord. He not doing what he's supposed to be doing by the Lord, man. He not feeding the flock. He leading them further to the pit, to destruction. So the Most High's like, all right. You want to rob your congregation? You want to get all these millions off your congregation? Watch what I do. The most I probably had a good laugh off of that one. Because I sure did. I sure did, man. Verse 20, right? Matthew 6 and verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Right. Because when your treasures are in the heavens, man, can't nobody steal your joy. You know what I'm saying? Can't no thieves steal your joy. Right. Because you are able to cast down imaginations. You're able to counsel people and give them wisdom from the heavenly father. Right. Your treasures are stored in heaven spiritually. You're not your focus isn't on money first. Right. Your focus is on the most high first, because you understand that you seek the, the heavenly father and his wisdom first. And all these things should be added unto you. You seek the kingdom of heaven. Right. And the heavenly father and all these things shall be added unto you. Roughly paraphrasing, man. You're not concerned about the fashion of this world or the material things of this world, because you know that it's only temporal, as you can see. 
the chain that he had on, the jewelry that he had, that he got robbed of, that was temporary. He had it for a certain amount of time, for a season, and now it's gone. Right? Matthew 6 and verse 21, and it reads, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And your heart goes into your mind, right? So where your treasure is, is where your mind going to be set on also. So you want to set your riches upon heaven, man. You want to you want to set your treasures in heaven. Right? Because that's where your heart going to be at. Your heart, your mindset, your thoughts and imagination going to be set on a heavenly on a heavenly estate, man. On a high vibration, on a high frequency instead of a low frequency. Thinking you got it going on, you a pastor the night before on the Sabbath, right? From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. This pastor was probably going over his uh, motivational speech. He probably read one precept and like, I'm going to make a whole motivational speech about this. Looking in the mirror on his little iPad, looking in the mirror, got his jewelry on. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is what I'm going to bring out tomorrow, babe. Look at that. This is what I'm going to bring out tomorrow, babe. We're going to make about a quarter million dollars tomorrow on Sunday. All right? Then he get in the church and the most high got, you know, his hitters waiting on him, man. All right? Because his treasures is set here on earth. He worried about how much money he's going to make in church on Sunday. Him and his wife probably in there. You know, I'm just saying, you know, this this probably didn't happen. I'm just, you know, going into my imaginations and thoughts, right? Him and his wife could have been in there like um, bidding. How much money do you think I'm going to make tomorrow, babe? How much money do you think they're going to pull in tomorrow? You know what I'm saying? I think they're going to put in... Uh, 175,000. The wife probably like, now nah, I'm gonna put they're gonna put in uh, 230,000. You know what I'm saying? But that's how that's how wicked these pastors are, man. That's why the most I say, woe to them pastors, man, that destroy and scatter the sheep of his pastor. Why? Because their treasures are set up, uh, set up here on earth. They're not concerned about their soul or their salvation, let alone their congregation's salvation, right. And with that, I like to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. It's H O I Las Vegas. It's H O I to the Cherish Fly. Shalom, Yashar Rala. He got a change. He got a change. I will not lose. Yeah. 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 Yeah.